we are going to start on this fashat here. It's important that we uh, start here because I want to go from the foundation, the wall foundation here, up to this uh, tilted roof. Uh, so the first step is to uh, start working with the, well, first we always need to know, let's open level zero. Uh, we always need to know uh, where we are working. We are working on this fashat. And now as the reference grid lines are going to be numbers, okay? So imagine that we are working between a grid line number two and number three. So that would be uh, our reference lines, either number two or number three. We are going to uh, solve this corner and uh, okay. So on the 3D view, uh, we can work with 3D views or we can work with uh, elevations or sections. I think if we work uh, with 3D views, it will be okay. So where I'm going to use the right view. Uh, we are on this facade and we are between grid lines two and three. Um, so what is the first element that we need here or how, or how these uh, foundations uh, work? Uh, So we are uh, going to look at uh, pictures. So that's what we are going to do, okay? So you see that in this, uh, this is a retaining wall. Uh, here we have a trench. And uh, what are we doing? This is the foundation that we have here. And the first thing we have to apply a waterproof layer here. It can be painting or it can be asphalt. It has to be something that prevents water from entering the, the concrete wall. And you see that we uh, go even, we, we have this shape with the foundation itself. Then on this foundation, we uh, place the drainage, the drainage pipe. And finally, you see that we fill this with aggregates so that the water can filter and can end up uh, going to the drainage pipe. Uh, where is the drainage pipe? Can we see? Okay, so this is what we are doing. First, we are applying this uh, waterproof layer on this concrete wall. And uh, then I want to see, yeah, that's the that's the idea. Okay, so we have the, the concrete wall, we have the waterproof layer, uh, then we have the drainage or the drain here at the bottom. And then we fill this with uh, aggregates and then, well, we can have uh, whatever here, okay? But uh, this is the, the finish, okay. But at least we're going to do this, the waterproof, the drainage, and this, uh, we're going to fill this with aggregates. Uh, here we can have different levels of uh, waterproof protection. So the more, the better. So we can have different, uh, materials uh, to add more waterproof. And this six, it's like a plastic layer. It's not waterproof itself, it's to protect the waterproof. This is painting. And if it's exposed to the soil, it can be damaged. This black, this number five uh, layer. So that's why we need this number six to, to protect that. So here we have everything. We have different layers, different paintings. Sometimes we have the thermal insulation outdoors. We're going to place the thermal insulation indoors in this case, but that's the idea. We have the paintings uh, uh, protecting the wall. Then we have this layer protecting the paintings or the waterproof layer. And then we uh, this is the drainage pipe that we have at the bottom. So. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so here we have a picture of this drainage pipe. And uh, the good thing is that all the foundations, every time we have a, a, a retaining wall on a basement, uh, we have to do the same. So you can use the same detail for single family houses, for commercial buildings, for everything. So let's do it. Uh, first, uh, what do we have? Uh, let's do the waterproof uh, layer. So I'm going to... Uh, go to, oh, and I'm going to use 
a architecture modeling place because we don't have these 3D families in Revit. So I'm going to use architecture, uh, component, modeling place. And um, do I have the right... No, we don't. Okay, so let's uh, do this with plumbing. It's not plumbing. We don't have uh, drainage. So what's the thing that... Okay, I'm going to use uh, plumbing. I don't like it. Fire protection, ceilings. Okay, I'm going to use this just to make sure because if I want to hide it in view, if it belongs to a category that it's not walls or whatever it would be easier. So I'm going to use this speciality equipment. And um, I'm going to use extrusion. And I'm going to set uh, the work plane on these grids, uh, either two or three. I'm going to use grid three. And uh, what do I have to do? I have to, uh, this is a waterproof layer. So I'm going to uh, trace the shape of the wall and then the foundation here. And this waterproof layer, it's something very thin. So I'm going to, uh, okay, I, I can stop here, this pink line. And now I'm going to use offset. And in this offset, I'm going to uh, type uh, one divided by eight inch. So it's something quite thin. And now if you click here, you can go inwards or outwards. I want you to go outwards like this. And now uh, we are uh, creating uh, that shape. Uh, if we are using component bottle in place, we have to close the all the gaps. So I have a gap here, I have to close it. I have another gap at the end. I have to close it. And I have to trim all the connections. So you have you have to use trim and all the corners have to be trimmed. For example, this corner is not trimmed. So now it is, and I do this, and now I have the first layer of waterproof here, okay? And uh, now we can move it in this direction. It has to cover the whole wall. So that's the first uh, waterproof layer that includes the basement wall and even the, the footing. So I click finish and there you go. So that's the first uh, waterproof layer. We can add different layers, okay? So we imagine that we have a layer and this can be painting, it can, it can be asphalt or it can be this protection. But this is something that protects the uh, the basement wall. Then uh, we need. Uh, so I'm going to uh, work to the with the right elevation again. So I have the first uh, layer here. Um, by the way, I think I can change the material. Let's edit in place. Let's select the layer again. And here in material, I think I have asphalt. This damp proofing would be, this is what we are looking for, this damp uh, proofing. Okay, so now we have the right material. It's something black or dark gray or something like that. Okay, so I think that's uh, the right material. Yep. It's, uh... okay, select it. Edit in place. If you don't edit, you can't uh, apply material. Select the material again, and it's damp proofing. Uh, D A M P. If you type this, 
uh, you have this material there. So next, I go to the right view again, and I need a drainage here. I can place a drainage, um, but usually we have to build something to make the drainage fit and sit on a solid ground. Okay, so I'm going to uh, create here a shape so that we can uh, hold the, the drainage pipe there. So I'm going to go again, architecture component uh, model in place. I don't remember what I used before. Is the special equipment, okay. And now I'm going to use extrusion. I'm going to set the work plane on grid three again. And I'm just going to draw uh, this. So I uh, select this corner. Then uh, this corner here, uh, this can be like, uh, let's make it uh, three inches up. And now uh, I have to close this uh, rectangle here. Trim. So on this element, I can use cement to do this. It has to be something solid and reliable. Uh, so on this, I'm going to place the, the drainage. So uh, how can I do that? I can create a circle. You can select circle here. You can click on the midpoint and we can have like a two inch. The radius is two inches. The diameter is four inches. Okay, let's say two and a half. And um, so that's the circle. And now I want to uh, cut this here, okay? And then I will build the, the drainage pipe. So let's, um, okay, I'm going to use this option, the split element. We use this to split beams, but we can split lines, okay? So I'm going to split element. And if I click here, now I have two lines and I'm going to split the circle too. And now if I trim, I think it will work. If I select the line and the circle, yeah, it works. Now I select the line and the circle here and now it works. Okay, so I'm creating this shape so that I can place the drainage here. So when we add uh, the, the aggregates, uh, the drain will not move. It will be there. And uh, because if the drain moves a lot, it can cause uh, some problems, but now the drain uh, will be there. Okay, uh, so once we have this shape, uh, well, you, you, you were, uh, if you have this shape, and now it's over there, and again, it has to go all around the, the building, so I can select this and extend it in this direction, and extend it in that direction. Uh, So now I have two things. I have uh, the waterproof layer and I have this. This is just something to make sure that the, the drainage pipe is not going to move. So finish, yes. So I want the concrete masonry unit. That would be the structural element. Uh, inside, I want thermal insulation here. Uh, I will use a drywall, this kind of finish. And outside, I want like a steel plate here. And that will be uh, an air cavity. And that air cavity would be uh, connected uh, or this structural element. Uh, we would have some railings here, some structure to connect the, the external finish uh, to the concrete masonry unit. Okay, so the materials are a concrete masonry unit. Uh, this is uh, thermal insulation. 
This is a drag wall or Gibson board, whatever. And uh, that's air cavity. And that's going to be a steel uh, plate. It can be steel, wood, but. Uh, yes. So uh, let's, uh, so that's the, the layers that we're going to have here. The steel plate is going to be something very thin. It can be one eighth of an inch. Uh, the air cavity can be two inches. Uh, the concrete masonry unit, it will be either eight or 10 inches. Uh, thermal insulation, six inches would be enough. And the drywall uh, can be half inch. So those are the layers of the, the wall that we are going to create here. But in the floor plan view, they we're going to have a vertical steel structure. Okay, so I want to adapt the size of the complete masonry unit. A complete masonry unit is something uh, like this. So these, those are blocks and are hollow here. Uh, if this is the inside and this is the outside, uh, I want to cover everything, the masonry unit and the steel uh, column with thermal insulation. So we, I won't have a thermal bridge here. And uh, that will be the dry wall. And here I have the air cavity and I have the steel plate uh, here. And that air cavity, we need uh, some connection between the structural elements and the air cavity. Okay, so uh, in this wall, uh, I have to interrupt the concrete masonry unit because we have this, we have the structural element. But I have to continue the the, the thermal insulation because I don't want the thermal pitching. Okay, so uh, that's the idea. So first I will create this wall, and then I will show you how to how to fix that. Um, so select uh, this wall. First we have to create all the layers. So edit type, uh, duplicate. And let's name this, uh, I don't know, a wall. I'm going to start with a zero and that will be at the top of the list. Okay, so that will be zero wall because if I name it wall, it will be hidden somewhere. So if I type zero, it will be at the top of the list. So wall, uh, basketball, court, whatever. Uh, that's the wall. So now you have to edit the structure. And uh, here we have only one material, it's concrete cast in place. Uh, how many layers do we need? Uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five layers. So I'm going to create a five layer wall. This is one, then insert two, three, four, five. Okay. And now uh, that's the exterior and that's the interior. So exterior, uh, it's a finish. So in category or in function, you can use finish. Uh, material, uh, I'm, I want this to be steel. Stainless steel, okay. Money, it's not an issue. Uh, so let's use stainless steel, double click. And the width, it's something very thin, uh, one eighth. Uh, the second, it's a thermal air layer category. Uh, so that will be air. And we have two inches. The third one, uh, it's structure. Okay, so I don't change that because it's a structural element. It's a concrete masonry unit. Here, I can type a uh, concrete and I think we have masonry units, okay? And I'm going to start with 10 inches. Uh, maybe I will have to change it, I don't know, but I will start with 10 inches. Uh, then uh, we have a thermal layer. It's a, 
It can be rigid insulation. If you type uh, rigid, uh, we have rigid insulation here. We are not defining the correct uh, thermal layer here, but I just need insulation and I need six inches. And finally, the interior finish, another finish. Uh, this is a drywall or a gypsum. I think we have gypsum, gypsum wall board. Okay, so we can use this one. And the thickness is a uh, half inch, 0.5. So I have created all these layers. If you want to preview the wall, uh, here uh, we have all the layers. Uh, that's the concrete masonry unit, uh, thermal insulation, drywall. This is the air cavity, and that's the, the steel, steel plate outside. So we click OK. And uh, we apply. And uh, now this is the wall that we need. Uh, I'm going to the top constraint. I'm going to select level 15, so it goes up. So here we have another issue. We have to fix this because we have the vertical structure, the uh, horizontal structure, but I want to go to level zero. So on level zero, well, first, if you don't have this uh, fine detail, if you have the coarse detail, uh, you won't see any layers. So if we want to see the details, uh, you have to do this, go to find, and here we see all the layers that we have. Uh, what's the first issue that we have here? Well, probably you don't notice, but uh, it's uh, upside down, okay? So uh, this is the steel plate because it's the one eighth. This is the cavity, the air cavity. And this is the concrete masonry unit and the thermal insulation. So it's upside down. I can select the wall and uh, click here. You see that we can flip. So we, we click here, we flip the, the direction. And now uh, inside, we have the thermal insulation inside, and then we have the concrete masonry unit outside. Uh, I want to measure the vertical structure. Okay, so I want to annotate, align. So this is 10 inches. Okay, so I thought it was uh, 10 inches, but I wasn't sure. So that's why I have selected the right uh, concrete masonry unit. But now I have to align the concrete masonry unit and the, the steel structure. So I'm going to move this from this point to uh, that point here. Okay, so that's what I want. If you look at the uh, what I draw there, uh, that's what I want. I want the concrete masonry unit to be interrupted here because we have the steel structure. And then, uh, uh, well, here it's uh, easier. Uh, I will drag this up to this point. Okay. And now here, I have to start another wall. I can continue this wall there. So now I have to be careful. If I go to architecture wall, I select the same, uh, not the retaining wall, but the, it's up the, top, up the top of the list. This uh, zero uh, wall that I have created. And if I click here and I do this, uh, well, you see, and then and I flip it upside down. Mm, well, and now I move it. Okay. Uh, it doesn't work. So I'm, I'm doing this uh, because it doesn't work. So uh, when I, I have to be careful when I draw the wall now, because I have to start here. So don't continue the same wall. Make sure that you start a different wall and then you can flip it and then you can move it. So there is a gap between the first wall and the second wall that we have created. If we go to the 3D view, uh, we have to select this one. We have to move it to the... Uh, oh, the top constraint, it's level 15. 
and uh, then on level zero, we can keep going up to that point again. Okay, so now if we're working with these kind of details, and I want to have the, the steel structure exposed here. Okay, so that's my design decision. I don't want a continuous wall outside. I want to divide uh, this exterior wall and I will use the, uh, the steel structure uh, to divide it. So now um, we have a wall. So for example, if we want to open a window on, on this wall, uh, we need the wall. Okay, so let's uh, use a window. Let's select this fixed window and uh, anyone. Uh, so let's uh, put it here. Now we're going to make things better. Okay, so uh, I want a window, but uh, this window is not anywhere because every time we open a window on a wall, uh, we need like a structural frame. On level zero, uh, let's go to view and create a section. And I'm going to create a section here. Okay, so on this section, open the section and uh, look at this. It's nice because we have all that stuff that we have made before. This is the retaining wall, okay? That's the wall that we have created. If I change the detail, I will see uh, all the layers here. And I have the window. Well, first decision, this window has the glass outwards. We can always flip this. If I go to uh, the little zero where I created the window, uh, you click here and you flip the, uh, the order. So now the glass is inside. I think that's safer to protect the, the building from the rain. But anyway, it can be either way, but I'm going to place the glass here, okay? That's the concrete masonry unit. That's the thermal insulation. And that's the, you see that this has like some structural thing, that rectangle that we have here. Well, that means that I can't open the window anywhere. So I have to finish this. So this material is okay. But uh, what about here? Uh, well, I want to use this beam as the uh, top structural element of uh, this window. Okay, so I'm going to use, to select the window, I want to select a line, and uh, I want to select that bottom part of this beam and the top part of the window, and that works. Okay, so I have a horizontal structural element here, uh, and now the window sits just under that horizontal structural element. That makes sense. And here, well, here we have the structure. We have the 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 concrete masonry unit. If we have structure below or under the window, that works. But if we have something heavy above the window, uh, we need the structure to hold this. Okay, so that's why I have selected uh, this element as a structural element. And then if I continue a wall here, uh, the the weight of the wall on the second floor. So this element will bear the, the weight of the second floor uh, wall and not the window itself, okay? So I think that works. Uh, the height of the window, I don't mind. So it can be uh, even one. So I have opened the, the window, but as you can see here, we have things that don't make sense. Oh, uh, what else uh, do I want? Okay, on level zero, First, on level zero, I don't see the window. Why is that? Because the height of the window is this. So probably the cut line of level zero will be here. Okay, so I don't see the window. If I want to see the, the window, I have to look, I have to uh, work with the view range. Uh, for example, on level zero, we have view range. So 
uh, the top view is seven feet above the level zero. Probably seven feet is not enough. I'm going to type here uh, 10 and apply. So 10, I don't think it's enough. Okay, so I'll do it again. View range, uh, let's type 12. No, let's type 13. What the hell? Uh, probably, oh, yeah, I know what's what's going on. Uh, it's in the um, the cut plane. Okay, so the cut plane, it's uh, three feet. I have to type 10 here. There you go. Okay, so it's not the top, it's the cut plane. So I'm doing it again. Uh, view range, edit, uh, cut plane. Uh, the cut plane is 10 feet. That means that in the section, uh, if there's a 15, sorry, if this is level 15 and I'm level zero, the cut plane is at 10, so I cut here, so I see the, uh, the window. Okay, so on level zero, I see the window. So again, if I want to open this, I would need like a structural element here. I need like those mullions that we have in the, or the mullions that we have here. I need something uh, structural uh, on the, on this vertical, on these two sides of the, of the window. But I do have a vertical structure here. So I'm going to make that window, uh, I'm going to annotate, aligned, and I want to go from this side to, uh, this side, and this is 26.4, 26 feet and four inches. Okay, so I'm going to select the window, edit type. Uh, you can duplicate, but I want to make the width uh, 26 and four inches. Okay. So now we have a window that uh, goes from the structural element to uh, another structural element. If I go to the 3D view, I have a window like this. Okay. Uh, but uh, this is not enough. Uh, I have to make it better. So, uh, to make it better on this level zero, uh, now I don't want to see the, the, the window, I want to see the wall itself. So I'm going to go to view range again, and I'm going to make it a uh, five. So uh, at five, I don't see the window. I just cut through the wall. And I want to fix this, okay? Because I want to continue it in the thermal insulation. Now here, the thermal insulation is interrupted. I have to interrupt uh, the concrete masonry unit because it cannot go through the, through the steel beam. So I have to interrupt this. I want to interrupt the steel plate because I want to see the, the, the steel column outside. But I want to continue the, the thermal insulation and I want to continue the internal finish. Okay, so how can I do that? I can select the, the, the wall And I can uh, here create parts. If you create parts, now each part of the wall, we have the wall itself, but we have divided the wall into different parts. So here I have the concrete masonry unit. This is the thermal insulation. This is the interior finish. This is even the air layer. It's uh, another part. And the steel plate outside, it's a different part here. The good thing is that now I can control the part. If I select this and I show uh, shape handles, you see that now I can uh, control the, uh, the, the length of this. And the length of this part is different from the length of the wall and the length of this. 
And now it's interesting because look at this. If I uh, select everything here and I filter, I have walls and I have parts. And then I have a lot of things, okay? But I have the wall and I have the part. They are two different entities. Uh, so if I do the same thing uh, with the uh, gypsum drywall, I show shape handles and I move it up to uh, this point. And I do the same with, um, with this wall here. I create parts. Now I select the thermal insulation, show handles, move it here. And now select this, show handles, move it there. So now this is what I want. This is what I have drawn. Uh, so I interrupt the concrete masonry unit because I have something solid. I have the thermal insulation here. I, con uh, I have the, the structure here. I continue the thermal insulation. So I don't have a thermal bridge. And I continue the, inter the interior finish because I want the interior finish to be continued. Okay, so with this, I have control uh, of the wall. And the good thing is that it's uh, it's done on the 3D view. Okay, so on the 3D view, uh, I have a continue. Uh, the problem with the 3D view is that now I have walls and I have parts. And I have some conflicts uh, looking at the wall and looking at the, the part, okay? So that's why we have uh, so many lines there. I will fix this later, but now I have fixed the floor plan because when I have the section, I have to, I interrupt this and I continue this and uh, then I have to do the same every single, yeah, so I have to create another wall here, divide that wall, create parts, for the, extend the thermal insulation and interrupt the concrete masonry unit. It takes more time, but it's more Accurate. Uh, so again, if we are going to show uh, a floor plan like this, uh, we don't have to do all these details. But if we are going to zoom in and to analyze uh, this, so I have to let people know uh, what I want. So what do I want here? I want to interrupt the exterior uh, steel plate. Okay, interrupt it. I want to expose the vertical structure. Okay, it's exposed outside, but I want to prevent the thermal breach. And to prevent the thermal breach, the interior thermal insulation has to be continued. Um, I can do something similar with the section. Okay, so with the section, I told you that this looks weird. Uh, so here in the section, look at this, I have the wall. Uh, but do I have parts? I don't. So I don't have parts, but but uh, the option of create parts, it's not available. Uh, so how can I fix this? Probably they are hidden. If we reveal uh, hidden elements, you see that the parts are hidden, you see? Okay, so we have to be careful with that uh, because once we have created parts uh, on the wall, uh, we have the wall and we have parts and there are two different entities there. So if we want to reveal the, the parts, uh, I have to unhide in view uh, this category of parts and now I will have parts in the section. So what do I want? Uh, I, I don't want uh, concrete masonry units there. It doesn't make any sense, okay? Because I'm going through the horizontal structure. So I can't have a, it's impossible. I can't have a solid element uh, there. So I have to show uh, handles and I have to move this. Uh, Have to select this and um, uh, 
Okay, I can't delete the part. So that's tricky. Because what do I have to do? I have to make this part uh, disappear. If I do this, enable to, okay, I cannot do that. Uh, so here it doesn't work uh, with parts. Uh, so what I'm doing, I am uh, selecting the wall. I'm not selecting the part, I'm selecting the wall. And uh, for the wall, I want a top uh, a top offset, let's say negative uh, one foot. Okay, so now I have fixed it. You see that on the 3D view, now the wall doesn't go uh, through it. Okay, so you understand what, what uh, I have done. Uh, I can't move this part because now the, the part is divided by, by the window. Okay, so I have uh, uh, the unit here and I have a part of the configuration unit there. So uh, what do I do? I don't want this configuration unit to be there. So I have to move all the walls a little down so that uh, now I don't have this, this issue. Okay. There will be another thermal bridge here that I have to fix, but I will do that in a, in a detail. But in this section, uh, that works. I want uh, the thermal insulation here, the concrete masonry unit, uh, and the window here, and everything is interrupted uh, by the, the window. Okay, so now I have fixed uh, the, the floor view, the, the level. I have fixed the section view, but I want to do something fun uh, here uh, because now that I have parts, I want to divide uh, these steel plates into different parts again. So I want to divide the part, but only the only that part, only the steel plate, uh, because I don't want to divide the the concrete masonry unit, and I don't want to divide the the interior finish. I only want to divide this. Okay, so let's go back to level zero. And I want to use reference planes now. Uh, so I'm going to go to architecture, reference plane. And I want to divide this into uh, four parts. So I have to create one. Uh, every time I create a reference plane, I have to name it. So this is, um, well, uh, one. And now I want to copy that reference plane uh, here and there randomly. And I hope the change has uh, the name has changed. Now this is wall two, and this reference plane is wall three. Uh, so I want the same distance. If I want the same distance, the best option is to go to annotate, aligned, one, two, three, four, five. Now click EQ, and we have divided this. You see that we have divided this into the, the same uh, distance. Uh, so I need these reference planes because on the 3D view, I want to divide this part, okay? So let's select the part. And uh, now we have this option here that you see that in this menu, we have divide parts. So I'm going to divide uh, the part. And I'm going to use intersecting references. I have created that uh, reference plane because now there's an intersection between this, play, uh, this part and the reference planes. So I use the intersecting references and uh, the intersecting references are not the levels are the reference planes. So I want to select reference plane, wall one, wall two, wall three, apply. Okay, and there you go. So now I have divided 
uh, this part, but uh, the interior finish is not divided. I have only divided the exterior uh, plate there. Okay, so that's what I wanted to do today. Just as a summary, uh, what have we done? Uh, we have created those roofs uh, using the massing and site. Uh, we have understood all the layers that we need and all the materials that we need for to protect a basement from the humidity. And now uh, we are working uh, with walls but we are uh, designing something special, okay? So uh, we have to make the most of the structural elements because the structural elements define where uh, I can open a window. So if we have two structural elements and one horizontal element here, okay, so that can be the frame of that window which I can make here. And then um, if, we cre if, we, if, if I create parts uh, with a wall, I can, uh, well, I can divide the, so uh, when, when I'm looking at this facade, this happens in reality, okay? So we, we don't have infinite uh, materials. We have to uh, divide the materials because sometimes we have constraints in, term, in terms of the, the size that a plate can have. It, if it's something very thin, I can have something very, very big. So look at the glass. So those glass panels are at the limit. So I have to, I have to divide the glass. So I cannot have an infinite glass without mullion. Uh, so the same thing applies with the interior, exterior, external finishes. So I can divide this. If I wanted to divide uh, this in half, uh, what can I do? If you go to the south elevation. Okay, so here we see the reference planes. Imagine that you want to divide this uh, by half. Uh, so what can we do? We can create another reference plane here. If I want to, uh, this to be uh, halfway, uh, we have to go to annotate, aligned, select this, select this, and then the floor. Press EQ. Okay, look at this son of a bitch. Uh, so if I do this, it moves the, the window. I don't want that. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go to architecture. I'm going to create a model line. I can uh, select a grid. I think it's one of the letters. So now I want to make sure that uh, this is in the middle. So I have to use a wireframe. Where the hell is this? Let me show up, why? Oh, because the line is there. Okay. I think it has to be on grid line number F. So now can I see the, okay. So now I can see the line here, and now I can move this reference plane to this half. I get rid of this uh, line. This reference plane now, it's a wall horizontal. And if I click here in uh, divide parts, 
now I have to use intersecting references, a reference plane, and I can have this a wall horizontal. There you go. And now I have another a division here. Okay, with this option, you can create divisions in the facade. And uh, just to finish this, if we look at this, uh, we can find that in these walls, we do have divisions, okay? So at some point, uh, we have to divide those, uh, those elements. So I can create a facade like this, just by using the reference plane, creating parts and dividing only the, the exterior part.